And if we really look at the realm of high performance, what you start to realize is people who are very good at their respective sport or career or in the special operations community, what they do are exceptionally good at turning it on and off these systems. So they're highly functional at achieving their milestones, but they're not spending out extra energy. Mm. Because when you go into panoramic vision, you start to uncouple this space time thing and you get some rest and relaxation. The way to think about this is, so we go back to duration path and outcome. That's the most stringent high focus regime for the brain. The way to get better at duration path and outcome is to engage in activities that are low duration path and outcome, where your brain is not in modes of analyzing duration path and outcome. What's the one phase of our life when we're not thinking about duration path and outcome at all? Sleep. Sleep. And so the reason why you can pull somebody's mind apart, their ability to think rationally and analyze duration path and outcome by sleep depriving them is because sleep, despite all its neurochemical complexity is really when we restore our ability to analyze duration, path, and outcome. Now you think about buds and you go, no wonder they sleep deprive them. They're, they're trying to figure out who has the ability to control these mechanisms and who doesn't. Most people fail. So when I think about how to recover, I've, I actually don't think about recovery as its own thing. I think about recovery as giving buoyancy or improving my ability to focus. So sleep, is a turning off of these brain circuits that are thinking about what's happening next. So some people experience challenges in falling asleep, they need to learn how to turn off thinking. And there's actually a way to do this. Uh, we're doing a study on this now. It relates to hypnosis that uh, would be fun to talk about. And we can, if you like. Yeah. The other thing is that just merely going into panoramic vision, say between a meeting, instead of looking at your phone, more focal vision, you're working hard on your book. Maybe you walk to the kitchen, just two seconds of what I call deliberate decompression, where you just kind of let your mind go broader, will allow you to reset your focus much more intensely when you return to, to that book, as opposed to if you'd looked at your phone or engaged yeah. even in some other kind of deep duration path outcome type uh, function of the brain. So when you start thinking about Meditation, it's also valuable because a lot of meditation involves focusing on your breath. I actually think a lot of people are, are spending out this ability. They're, they're working too hard in their, the activities that are designed to reset them. Uh -huh. So the two ways to reset yourself in wakefulness. Being just very adamant about my meditation practice. That's right. Because right. It's, a, it's a letting go. It's not that's a, right. it's, you know, it's, it, we're so programmed to like force ourselves to do things or to like, dive in with intentionality, but so much of this is more elusive than that. I think that we can all do ourselves a great service and perform it much better in what we're doing by taking little micro recoveries in the form of dilating our gaze in between meetings, just for a second. Viewing a horizon is the best way to do it because it naturally brings the eyes into defocus. We're doing this in VR because we can control uh -huh. the visual environment completely. When you go into this defocus mode, you turn off that brainstem circuit, you're conserving norepinephrine for your next bout of focus and activity. Otherwise you're spending it. And the brain doesn't care how you spend it. it doesn't care if it's on Instagram, doesn't care if it's watching the news, but learning how to defocus very, and then refocus very quickly can get you through a race that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to get through. It saves you energy and it, and it builds energy.